Hello chess friends and welcome to Azad of Chess Channel and welcome to a really interesting game that has been played today in the early edition of the title cup in 2024 that you can follow of course on the official and beautiful chess.com website. We have here a very very great game between Magnus Carlsen against Alexander Grischuk from this last round of this really beautiful tournament and if you're not familiar with the concept of this uh, title Tuesday event uh, the players have to play 11 blitz rounds uh, and of course the best out of the rounds is the winner but of course this event is going through the whole year and then of course the winner will be decided uh, by gaining some points through the events through the whole year so let's dive now into this game as i said magnus cars against alexander grishuk alexander grishuk always sort of a dark horse in any event because when uh, alexander grishuk has his day i think he can basically beat anyone in my opinion for one of the best chess games from this event for sure so let's see now what happened with the white pieces magnus open with the move knight to f3 uh, we have d5 by grishuk and now uh, magnus goes into the king's indian attack uh, here no normal development by grishuk bishop to g2 by magnus and now this normal expansion on the queen side because magnus didn't challenge really uh black so far in the center so so far the queen side expansion perfectly fine for black calcine by magnus here uh, grishuk goes also in sort of a king's indian style wants to develop the bishop on g7 b3 double fiaghetto stuff here by um uh, magnus cars he wants of course to compete he's anticipating of course the possibility of bishop to g7 so that's why he wants to have a certain competition against this bishop uh on dark horse we have bishop to g7 magnus competes now calcing by grishuk and now e3 magnus prepares now to break and enter here in the center of the board we have now h5 very very interesting move it's also a theoretical novelty a move that has not been played so far in chess history in database i saw knight to c6 uh, has been played many times bishop to f5 bishop to g4 also perfectly fine also b6 uh, going black by himself also in sort of a uh, double theory and Heto style is perfectly fine but h5 is i think sort of a move that no one likes because it's sort of a waiting move you're basically telling now white to show his cards show me what you got where are you going to break the position and magnus goes immediately aggressive with the move c4 Grishuk says I'll take, okay, after B takes D4, Magnus still has the opportunity to push the pawn in the center of the board, Knight to C6 by Grishuk, normal development, now Magnus goes with B4, C takes D4, E takes D4, and now Bishop to F5. Uh, here we have um, the opportunity for Black to somehow occupy the weak E4 square, and here after this move, um, uh, E takes uh, D4, Magnus has now the so-called hanging pawn structure. It's very tough to play I think for both sides, any of this position, because white has a certain activity with his pawns in the center of the board, but sometimes this pawn can be an object of your opponent's attack. Also, if black in some lines is allowing maybe an expansion here uh, by this pawns, it could be also very dangerous because then white will get some spaces. So very, very double-edged pawn structure, I think, to handle for both sides. So this hanging pawn structure has really millions and millions of uh, possible outcomes. So in my opinion, really a dynamic position by these two great players. So as I said here, bishop to f5 by Grishuk going for the e4 square. Magnus goes now with d5. Grishuk goes now for uh, the c2, but also the d3 weakest. Magnus has to now protect. And now rook to c8, going simply uh, further against both of these pawns. As I said, this hanging pawns can be really an object of your, of your opponent's attack so now magnus has to be careful how to defend this especially this backward pawn on c4 we have knight to d4 by grishuk bishop to e4 here grishuk competes also against this light school bishop on g2 and now magnus doesn't react correctly he should have played here bishop to e4 normal stuff knight to e4 he can compete here maybe get the queen out on e2 rook to d1 maybe rook to c1 rook from f to d1 or rook from f to e1 so uh this should be i think a pretty equal position but magnus made already a huge blunder with the move rook to e1 and grishuk is not now letting this position slip he goes really with the best line knight to d3 this is the way to go attacks the rook but also attacks now the bishop on b2 magnus takes grishuk takes out now the uh, piece on b2 is of course attacking the queen the queen has to react but now a beautiful move here by grishuk queen to b6 this is a very really great move because he's supporting still his powerful knight on b2 and magnus has now to react really uh, tough stuff because knight to e4 bishop to d4 could happen uh, this rook is lined up on this diagonal so that's why magnus decided to trade off the queens at least he's saying here in this line 
that the knight is at least for a while standing in the way uh, of this bishop indirectly of course so so far Grishuk has to clear this diagonal for the dark school bishop in order to maybe attack the rook on a1 but now again a new mistake by magnus magnus had to play here the move knight to b5 uh, because after knight to e4 rook to e4 as we said the rook is uh, not attacked immediately the knight is standing in the way but now of course knight to c4 the rook retreats magnus uh, uh, could be challenged like this but after knight to a3 okay black is better we have to mention it uh but um not such a dramatic position i would say playable maybe in blitz level of course anything can happen but i think uh, a top gm and really one of the strong strongest players in the world magnus carson would somehow i think in this position squeeze the draw out of this position but after a takes b6 magnus played now the move bishop to f3 allowed here knight to g4 and now you see many pieces are lined up here um by, by the dark school bishop magnus goes now with bishop to g4 we have h takes g4 knight from a to b5 uh trying to somehow hold this position here around the square uh, d4 but now grisha goes with rook to c4 and he's now attacking the knight twice what should you do if you try here rook from a to b1 could be playable then rook to d4 knight takes d4 bishop to d4 wins also uh two my uh, two minor pieces against the rook here for black um of course black is much much better here um instead of this move rook from a to b1 magnus go went with the rook from a to c1 um allowing again grace took the same idea uh, knight, uh rook takes d4 knight d4 bishop to d4 again grace took has gained two minor pieces uh now four uh for the rook and has now i think a really, really a completely completely winning endgame here magnus goes with rook to e7 what should he do he has created now a passer but uh, grishuk has calculated everything in a proper way plays now the move bishop to f2 you cannot take of course because of the fork on d3 and again uh, the game would be over so that's why for bishop to f2 we have now king to g2 uh, here by magnus grishuk retreats we have a rook to e4 and now a rook to d8 here by grishuk competing simply against this powerful pawn on d5 magnus goes for this one grishuk takes of course this one and now magnus is uh, getting attacking against the knight but nothing really dramatic for black here black and retreat Bra black will find of course here uh, the piece uh, the activity for the pieces here grishuk played a simple f5 a simple threat against the rook the rook retreats and now grishuk of course finds a beautiful square for the knight now grishuk has really here a solid attacking formation everything is compact and with these two minor pieces against one rook i think this should be completely completely winning here for black rook to e2 uh, knight to g4 rook to b8 magnus goes for the spawn but grishuk can defend it a rook to e8 and now king to f7 getting the king closer and now again good moves here by grishuk simply improving uh, the position of all of these pieces we have now uh, rook to e5 uh, knight to h5 going for this pawn here on g3 magnus goes here grishuk goes with the rook on d3 and now after rook to e8 Rook to g3, the position is really, really collapsing here. Uh, rook to d3, Magnus went with rook to c8, but now Grishuk builds here a really beautiful uh, uh, checkmate pattern with this knight, with this rook, with also with this bishop. Rook to c7, king to f6, and now after rook to e8, rook to h3 was played by Alexander Grishuk, and it was a beautiful, beautiful and stunning checkmate. So uh, the winner of this early edition was uh, the top grandmaster, I wonder, Leon. Congratulations also to him. He played really an awesome tournament, but uh, Alexander Grishuk played here really this beautiful game against Magnus Carlsen. So, okay, maybe we'll cover one more game from this event. Thanks for watching, and what do we say in the end? Chess is the best, of course.